Nail anatomy is really important for understanding how to prep nails safely and properly. Everybody's anatomy is different depending on their genetics, their nail shape, how they use their hands and their nails, and what things they're exposed to out there, um, and how often they care for their nails as well. So you can see here, I have skin that has grown out on top of my nail plate. It's not evenly all the way out onto the nail plate. My thumb also has some of this skin right here. Over here, there isn't any on the nail plate, but here you can see a strip of it that has grown out onto the nail plate. This is what's considered the epinicium, which is the live tissue that is technically attached to the skin back here. So this skin and this skin are the same. So if that's what epinicium is, then what's the cuticle? The cuticle is actually the white bits that get stuck to the nail plate. So let's say I push back with my cuticle pusher, or maybe just from daily life, my skin gets pushed back as my nail plate starts to grow. Some of you might naturally have fingers that look like this, where your skin is always kind of pushed back, maybe just from what your nails come into contact with, but you've got this white crusty stuff that's actually on your nail plate. This white crusty stuff is actually what cuticle is. So this is an important thing to understand that this skin that's still attached to your finger back here is not cuticle, it's epinicium. And the white stuff that's attached to your nail plate is cuticle. And that's what we re remove with either cuticle remover or with uh, bits or with a buffer or a nail file as we do our natural nail prep. I like to do dry manicuring when it comes to gel. A lot of you might have come across, you know, soaking your nails in water or using cuticle remover to get the cuticle off of the nail plate. You can use those, but when it comes to gel, gel likes dry, scratchy, textured surfaces. So the drier you keep your nails during this process, the better the results you're going to have. So I'm just going to take the 180 grit side of a regular nail file. You can also use the 100 grit side. If you have very, very strong, thick nails, you might find a little bit more luck using the 100 grit side. I'm actually just going to gently, and with like circular motions, just kind of go in here in counterclockwise and clockwise movements. Just scrub off that white cuticle from the nail plate. You don't need to use a lot of pressure. It's more about a scrubby motion just to get everything to come off and etch the nail plate at the same time, okay? So your nail should have kind of this look to it. And now we've already got this back area prepped on our nail plate. Can you see how I was able to remove all of that white cuticle? So same thing, to prep the rest of my nail plate, I can again go through the rest of my nail plate nice and lightly and remove that shine and remove that smooth texture from the surface of my nail. Gel needs something to adhere to. And so by having a nice etched surface like this, your gel is going to be able to grip on to your nail plate. Now, when it comes to the epinicium, which is this skin that we have back here, and you can see that it's kind of a flap of skin, there are lots of different opinions about what should or should not be done with this material. Since it is technically skin, which is living tissue that's attached to my finger, a lot of people don't like to promote the cutting of this tissue. The reason being is because when we cut through this material, especially if we overcut, we can actually cause bleeding. We can open the seal underneath our epinicium that can allow for dirt and bacteria and things to get inside of where our nail matrix is or where our nail grows from back here. And also we can open ourselves up to possible infection just in the skin itself. Now I am one of those who does like to trim off the skin, especially if I have a serious amount of it. Now, what do I mean by serious amount? So I'm gonna brush off the skin here just to give you an example. This right here, this amount of skin right here is not something I would worry about with nippers or cuticle scissors or trying to get rid of. But you can see that as I go further along, I've got a serious amount of skin that is either going to just flap out there and maybe get torn if you know I don't do anything about it, 
or it's just going to be unsightly and it's going to make my gel manicure look unclean. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some cuticle nippers and or cuticle scissors, depending on which one you prefer, and we're going to gently trim this skin off. Now, something very important when it comes to our tools is that we want to make sure our tools are clean and free of bacteria. So even if you're doing this on yourself at home, make sure that you're disinfecting your tools and at least washing them with hot soapy water and scrubbing them with you know like a manicure brush like this or something that's going to really scrub out any dust debris and bacteria hot soapy water does wonders to make sure that your nippers or cuticle scissors are clean now i've already used these on my nail table on myself earlier today so you'll notice a little bit of dust and debris from me using them and just having them out um, while i'm filing but these were clean before i started using them the other thing that you want to make sure of before you use any kind of cutting instrument on yourself is make sure that they're in good shape. Make sure you don't have any jagged edges or areas where your nippers or, or scissors have been dropped. The blades should match up perfectly and you should get a nice clean closure on each cutting motion. If you've dropped your nippers or the tip is bent or they're not closing all the way, you could actually end up pulling on the skin rather than actually trimming it off. All right. And then one other way that we really make sure that we do a good job with our nail preparation is the way that we hold our nippers. So with nippers, oftentimes people will just hold them like this from the top and do cutting like this on the top. The challenge is we want to make sure that we actually trim the skin at an even angle. If we cut the skin like this at a 45, we're going to end up with an open edge on the top that's prone to fraying. Okay. So what I like to do is I put my nippers upside down and then I grab them while they're upside down. And now I'm going to use this kind of motion to trim the skin. This works really well on other people, especially if you're working on a client. So if I had my client's nail here and I'm going and trimming, I'm going to get a nice 90 degree cut where the skin is even both on the top and the bottom. I'm not over cutting or under cutting like this. Okay. So for the sake of this video, since I'm going to be trimming my own skin, I'm going to make sure that I do a 90 degree cut here, but you're not going to see the same grip of my nippers. So what I like to do first is just get the edge of my nippers right up underneath. Now, again, there's some people that you're going to watch that are doing Russian manicuring style where they're cutting all the way from down here, all the way up and around. But honestly, I caution you against that because most of you are going to end up over trimming the skin and you really don't want open skin. Sore skin, open skin actually tends to grow back and be a little bit more scarred after it grows back. So you're going to end up with more kind of calloused, hard, rough skin. So I just want to get the edge of my nippers right underneath and then I'm going to turn them so I get a nice 90 degree cutting angle. And I can even tip my finger away from myself a little bit to do this. Sometimes the pieces might even pop off onto your nippers. You can brush them out of the way if it's difficult for you to be able to see. But you really should have like one nice clean consistent cut all the way along. Don't be afraid to brush things out of the way while you're working so that you can see what you're doing. And I don't like to cut past this edge here just because I don't like to, to cause myself to bleed. I have very thin cuticle skin, so it's nice to just keep things gentle. Okay, so that's basically what it should look like there. And you can also go back one more time with your nail file and just clean any little bits of debris off. Give it one more pass. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take a nail wipe and we're going to cleanse the nail with isopropyl alcohol. A lot of you have also asked me if you can use 99% isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, IPA, rubbing alcohol. They're all the, exactly the same thing. The trick is, is that 99% actually evaporates too quickly for it to kill bacteria. So if you have 99%, just put a little bit of distilled water in it 
and that'll help you big time with making sure that the alcohol has enough time to actually sit on the nail and kill the bacteria before it evaporates away, okay? So when you're done, you should have a nice etched, kind of scratchy, chalky looking nail. Again, you can push back the skin and tuck it one last time. And this is a very nice, basic way for you to prep your nails for gel application without overcutting, over trimming, or having to know how to do any Russian manicuring techniques. But this is exactly what your nails should look like before you put on any type of product, whether it's a bonder, a base, or any type of gel. Hope that helps. Thank you.